The motorsports world is where legends are made, the unthinkable happens, and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with Jim Beaver. Welcome to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, welcome to uh, everybody tuning in, whether you're tuning in on Dan Patrick Radio, Sirius XM Channel 211, uh, the, uh, I guess, American Forces Network, Sports Byline USA, or downanddirtyshow.com, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to your shows. Uh, what, Podcast One? We're all over the place. Thank you, guys. Uh, we are going to do our best to bring you two hours of um, of entertaining radio. I can tell you. For the next two hours, we will not sit here and talk about COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Uh, I may cycle into some of the conversation, especially when we start looking at schedules and calendars, because we've got some big, big news coming out of IndyCar, NHRA, Supercross, Off-Road, and a whole lot more. So we'll get into that in hour number two, but we're not going to focus the show on that. No, we're going to bring you some entertaining guests like we do, like we have been doing for almost a decade now. And i got to tell you, today's show will not disappoint that is right we have indy 500 champ one of the top dudes in the indycar series a good friend of mine mr alexander aka alex rossi on the show uh he and i we're actually going to uh hear hour number one the power hour on sirius xm we're going to take up the entire hour with alexander rossi that is right three whole segments of mr rossi and uh i don't know we got a lot to catch up on here so stoked to have him around for the first hour the power hour of the show and then uh, moving on into hour number two we actually have an interview i did some of you missed it uh it was the start of the year there was a whole lot going on a lot of events dakar rally just wrapped up we caught up with my good friend toby price that is right the man the myth the legend toby price we're going to re-air that interview that a lot of you missed on the show i think you're really going to enjoy that one as well uh man we got a lot to talk about though motorsports yeah it's not happening right now you know what is happening i racing and esports that's right sim racing blowing up and i'm going to be talking about it one i've got my jim beaver esports team we've been doing this thing for a year now it's like uh, everybody has found it and everybody is jumping into sim racing and we're going to have all the details on all the races coming up some of uh, the big news storylines coming out of sim racing yeah never thought we'd be going there full-time on the show probably going to happen at some point today so big big show today alexander rossi also got toby price taking some fan questions hit me up at jim beaver 15 if you got any questions you'd like me to answer on the show we'd love to hear them all right we are going to take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more here on the general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. 
With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Racer. I'd like to welcome uh, one of my guests. I guess, uh, I don't know, Alex, I was trying to think back, man. We're, we're going back three or four years. I was trying to think how many times you've been on the show, and between out at events and just calling in, man, it's been quite a few, but uh, it's been since last year since we've had you, man. Welcome, uh, Welcome back thanks so much i appreciate it it's always uh it's always a pleasure yeah well you know normally about this time you and i'd be talking about uh probably long beach or uh something like that right now i i don't know what we've got to talk about but uh you've been kind of keeping busy first off dude i gotta ask you about uh what's going on uh at your house i guess you've got uh, quite the bourbon collection of bar going on there and you've got kind of the uh i guess the hot spot there in indy for at least uh you and hinch and connor huh um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, so James and I are part of kind of this bourbon group, if you will, in Indianapolis that, uh, myself, him and Robert Wickens actually started uh, probably three years ago now. So, um, now that the off season's kind of extended a little bit, um, we're kind of continuing that and it's, uh, it's kind of fun. You know, we rotate between each other's houses and, um, everyone brings like a bottle in a brown paper bag and we do like a blind tasting and there's like six of us. Um, and then the host for that specific event gets to keep all the bottles, whether they're good or bad. So that's, it's kind of cool. Um, and you know, we, we, uh, we enjoy it. We learn about it and, um, you know, it's a good, good way to hang out and, and spend time with each other. Obviously now with the current state of life, um, we do that kind of virtually, I guess, yeah. but, uh, nonetheless, um, you know, when, when this was all starting out, yeah, James was over at the house for a little bit, and we were consoling our depression of being sent home from St. Pete. Yeah, that's that one had to have been a little bit weird for you guys, you know, because I know across the board, you know, motorsports events have been canceled, but St. Pete, I think, you know, St. Pete and probably the Australian Grand Prix, I think those two events probably out of everything in motorsports hit the most hard because teams, drivers were actually on ground, like ready to go, and then it was like, you know, the the plug was pulled, which was the right decision. I just think it was man that that had to have been brutal on you guys. Yeah, it was it was strange. I mean, I arrived Thursday morning, and kind of on the way down Thursday morning, there was kind of the rumors that were happening uh, down in Australia with with F one, and we were um, all kind of you know most of the indie contingent was on that flight, and we were all kind of talking about you know, well, thank God that's not happening to us and, and all that sort of thing. And then by kind of lunchtime, rumors started flying around that it was going to be a similar situation. And then, you know, we announced that it was going to be a closed doors event. There was just going to be a two day event, Saturday, Sunday. And, you know, that was disappointing, obviously, because, um, you know, we, we do this to, to put on a show in front of fans. Um, but, you know, we were happy that we were at least getting our, the first race underway after a really long IndyCar off season since September. And then um, kind of went through the whole process of getting medically screened on Friday, all the essential personnel and um, kind of just planning your Friday as a, as a Thursday and doing your normal prep stuff with your engineers and um, physically and mentally what you usually go through. And then right before lunch, uh, it all, it all kind of ended. So um, booked the flight home Friday night and, and got back and, then it was just kind of like, now what? And then obviously, you know, it's all escalated kind of very quickly since then. 
And um, obviously it was, it was the right decision based on the circumstances of the world. But, you know, when you're in that moment, you're kind of thinking, is this, is this really necessary? Are we making the right decision? There would have been an awesome opportunity for TV ratings if we're the only thing on TV. But, um, you know, ultimately there was, there was reasons far outside of our control for it happening. So, yeah, now everyone kind of is just in limbo waiting to, to see what happens next. Yeah. Well, and here's a question. I know I face this just with my off-road program and things like that. And we're lucky that we had like three, you know, we had uh, Parker, King of the Hammers, Mint 400, and then it was like all this hit right after the Mint. So we had like three big races in. So, you know, a lot of our sponsors were already, you know, they were getting value and things like that. But do you feel like you guys with the pause on the season, a little bit unknown, obviously you've got some heavy financial partners with your program and things like that. I mean, uh, are you guys in this kind of downtime, like, you know, going, Hey, how, how do we stay relevant? How do we bring media ROI to our partners? You know, and obviously you're doing this interview, but you know, it's, I think a lot of guys are getting creative with social content, things like that. I mean, is there any of that going on with, with drivers and teams and things like that going, Hey, how do, how do we, how do we keep things going for our partners and, and team and, you know, and, and, and stay out there, but be safe at the same time, you know? Right. I mean, it, yeah, it's definitely a, a quandary that everyone finds themselves in to, to varying degrees, um, you know, Napa Auto Parts and Auto Nation are very big corporations, and I think at this current time they've got bigger things to worry about than their IndyCar program. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we we have an obligation to them to to kind of try and, and and give an ROI. So I think that's why you're seeing such a big uptick in in kind of this e-sports, i-racing, virtual, whatever you want to call it, um, events um, that kind of debuted. Uh, last weekend and, and the weekend before that, and um, it's something that I'm going to take part in. I I honestly hate it, uh, <laughs> not because of the point of it, but just because I've, I've never done it. I've never really enjoyed it before, and now it's kind of a thing where you know you're you, you're kind of obliged to in in some sense of the word. So you know I've I've kind of procured a sim by by stealing one from a buddy of mine in Indianapolis. Uh, George Steinbrenner was nice enough to say I could take his while he's <laughs> out of the state for for a while and um yeah i'm gonna try and you know learn as, as much as i can i've been spending a, a lot of hours on it more than i'd like to admit the past kind of four or five days to kind of get prepared for the indycar um virtual race season opener this saturday um and yeah i mean that's just kind of one of the ways that we can you know stay relevant and represent uh our partners and, and the people that that support us um then on top of that, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely a social media element of it that's, uh, you know, a big power player these days, especially with the current climate of things. And, and I'm trying to figure out where my place is in that and come up with some ideas of, of video uh, series and stuff to kind of just give people an insight into, into what I'm doing and how I'm dealing with it all. Yeah. Well, you know, and going back to the iRacing thing, it's funny because you and I – almost have the exact same stance on uh, on sim racing and I'm a big fan of I I mean I've got an esports team and we're franchised in eNASCAR and and so I've been involved for a year but I actually don't personally own a sim and it's been purposely because I've been behind the wheel and like I've been horrible and it's like some of these guys that dedicate their time to the sim are phenomenal and I'm like you know I can drive a real world race car but like for me like the, there is a lot that is the same but then there's some that's different you know and it's like the few times I've been in Correct. a sim I just I haven't been good so like I haven't gone down that route but now even now I'm looking at you know I've got this team I've got all these phenomenal drivers signed to my program and it's like man maybe I do need to order a sim and and get involved here but it's like I, I guess for me it's like I feel like I'm starting from ground zero and uh you know and, it, and it's like there's all these guys with these years of experience built up and I feel like I'm going to be be like a sitting duck out there you know when i do it you know no that's that's the thing and, and that's my kind of biggest uh pet grievance with it if you will um it's just the fact that so a lot of people are like well you're on sims all the time kind of before race weekends and everything and it's like well there's, there's a very big difference between an actual purpose-built kind of five million dollar simulator that's built by a manufacturer that has a full-time team of people working on it where a tire model and, and the actual vehicle dynamics are, are modeled properly to iRacing, which is a big step above a, a Forza Gran Turismo, but is still in a way a game. You know, it, it, is a, it is a racing simulator. You have to have some knowledge of technique of, of how to drive the car, but because there's a level of kind of virtualness to it in the sense that, you know, iRacing still is trying to appeal to, 
you know, a, a race fan who, who doesn't have any racing experience that kind of wants to get a, a glimpse of what it's like, there's an element of, of fakeness to it. And that fakeness actually is, there's lap time in it. Because if you can kind of find the tricks and the kind of loopholes that exist within the, the infrastructure of the game, it can add up to a second, two seconds over a lap, which, you know, for me is really frustrating because I'm there to like driving the race car to what I think is, is how it would be driven on the track and like at the limit of it. And um, you're, you're so far off. I mean, an example is I was, I was testing a barber in an Indy car yesterday and like I was six tenths below the pole time and like sweating to try and get the lap. <laughs> and like, for me, I, like I pulled everything out of it. Like it, it was my theoretical, everything was there. All the sectors were put together and then I just out of curiosity um, Googled, you know, what the record is around there. And it was like three seconds quicker. And I, and I, and at that point I just turned it off and went to bed because it was like, this is, this is ridiculous. So there's, there's a, there's a lot in it. There's a, there is a talent to, to being a sim racer and the guys that are pros at it are phenomenal. And I have huge respect for them because the, the pressure that they're under to find hundreds of seconds, every, every corner is, is pretty amazing. But um certainly not something that, that i have the skill set for you and we'll be back with a whole lot more with alex rossi when we return here to the general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor your life demands a tire that provides durability comfort and performance and that's what general tire delivers for you from the all-season grip of the grabber uhp to the comfort and on-road manners of the grabber hts to the durability and off-road traction of the grabber at2 General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We've got uh, Indy 500 champ Mr. Alex Rossi on the show. Alex, we're talking a little bit about sim racing and iRacing, and, uh, you know, we got this whole IndyCar iRacing challenge thing coming up, and I guess, I guess you know, what really has me interested – I I know the t- the hours that like my my NASCAR team you know those drivers put in the sim and I mean for for a race they're putting you know two hundred hours in a sim and we've got four or five guys doing data setups and things like that like there's so much time investment and I feel like you're going up against some IndyCar racers who have actually spent a lot of time in the sim and have developed setups and now they're doing a lock setup for you guys where you know everybody's running the same setup whether it's good or bad you guys at least have the exact same car so it gives a guy like you who probably doesn't have the hundreds and hundreds of hours in the iRacing sim you know it at least gives you a shot where you're running the same setup as everybody else you know yeah yeah, yeah for sure and um like i i don't think i'd participate either way or if, if it was if that wasn't the case i should say but um still i'm i'm still quite a ways off so um yeah i need to work on other excuses hopefully by saturday to justify. <laughs> bourbon it's a good excuse right bourbon now yeah, i would just yeah. i was up too late with a bourbon <laughs> you know sorry i'm, I'm a little sure. laggy today uh <laughs> So going back to the bourbon, I got a question for you. I was actually in Indy, uh, well, last year at the 500, and I had a buddy, and I, I, I like to dabble a little whiskey myself, and uh, I'm actually a bourbon fan. But have you been to, I think it's like called Hotel Tango Whiskey there in downtown Indy? I have. Yeah, yeah I used to live. What's that? Nice space. The spirits are great, and the fact that it's all kind of done – under one roof, everything from gin, vodka, whiskey, uh, moonshine. It's, it's pretty wild. 
Yeah. No, I just I, I didn't know it existed, and I had a buddy, and we were there, and I was like, man. And then you know, the whole whiskey thing popped up. I'm like, I bet Alex has been there. But uh, I laugh that you're a bourbon guy, and I, you know, because we've got you know what. I am absolutely anti-scotch, completely can't do it. You know, I like a little bit of Canadian yep. whiskey. Like, I, I feel like you're probably kind of the, got a little bit of the same taste palette as me. I mean, where, where are you at in regards to stuff like that? Canadian whiskey, I'm sure, is good. Not a scotch guy, or are you a scotch guy? Uh, no, not a scotch guy. It's funny. I started out kind of, I guess, being a scotch guy-ish until I got introduced to bourbon, and then kind of my world changed. Um, so my my, like – my gateway bourbon, if you will, was uh, was Basil Hayden. So that was the first thing I had where I was like, okay, that's actually really delicious. Um, in terms of my top three at the moment, I'd say everything from a, a Weller Antique um, to a Michter's 10 to a Old Fitz 13 um, are, are maybe in my top three, but you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to kind of have friends in this community to, to be able to like source some, some of the, the allocated bottles and such. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's crazy how, how popular it's become and, and, and it almost as much fun, if not more fun for me than drinking it is actually just the, the hunt and like going out to these random liquor stores across the nation, kind of where I am for races or tests or whatever, and, and stopping in and seeing if they have anything that's, that's a good price. And, um, you know, one in, I'd say one in 15 times you find something cool and it's uh it's, it's like a little victory. So, so that part is it's almost as much fun as drinking it. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure too, you know, you travel as much as you do and like there's little local distilleries, things like that. And you get a chance to kind of try some things out. Like, I guess, you know, I know race weekend, you're not necessarily, you know, really drinking, but you know, no. what I mean? it, it gives you an opportunity to kind of, you know, I guess it's a, it's a fun hobby. Let's put it that way. Right. No, a hundred percent. Yep. It's uh it's crazy how much money it, takes up as well which is frustrating <laughs> but i guess that's the same for all hobbies the money pit yeah exactly hence why i haven't totally jumped into the sim racing thing yet either because all of a exactly. sudden i'm gonna have yeah. a thirty thousand dollar sim and my wife's gonna be like why do we have this yeah. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. uh, so i do have one uh, one thing to bring up i do i know you're a patriots fan um as mm-hmm. all this is swirling the one actual news story out of real sports has been Tom Brady. Obviously, he's leaving New England. I'm a, I'm a, obviously, I'm an Arizona guy, so I'm a Cardinals fan, but Patriots have always been kind of my number two. And uh, Brady, like, I, I feel like as a Patriots fan, you know, it's like I, I feel like nobody really feels, you know, I, I think a lot of people were thinking people are going to hate Brady for moving. Like, I feel like we're all kind of justified and we're still Tom Brady fans. I, I, I don't know. Do you, how, how are you feeling about this whole thing, Alex? No, a hundred percent. Like I always said that I was, I was a, I was a Tom Brady fan more than I was a, a Patriots fan. Um, but then, you know, having, having watched the Patriots for so long, um, you know, I became a fan of, of a lot of the other players on that team. Um, some of which are, are still there. Some of which are, are, are leaving or have already left. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting and exciting to, to not only see how Tom does, at the Bucks, but then also how the Patriots do without Tom, right? Yeah, Cause there's right. always been this question of can Tom, you know, have the success without Bill and can Bill have the success without Tom? And I think now, you know, in, in a roundabout way, not a black and white way, but we'll, we'll get an answer to that at least a little bit. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. And um, you know, from a, from a guy that's collecting a big salary now, I mean, it's probably pretty smart to go to Florida where it's tax free, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, I never even looked at it that way, but uh, I think you're absolutely spot on with that. But uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah. And it's funny I was reading. So you became a Patriots fan. So when you were in Europe, that was the that was the only American football you got, right? It was Patriots or Packers, which is weird. That was the weird. only thing that was actually made it over to a to a broadcast. So um, it was before like streaming services and um, NFL game day pass or whatever, red yeah. zone, any, anything like that. So, yeah, they, I don't know what type of deal either of those franchises or the NFL had with, like, the European sports networks, but it was, it was Packers Patriots. Those were two options. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, because I know in Mexico, um, you know, the Los Angeles Dodgers have a lot of Hispanic fans, and it's because the Dodgers in a lot of areas of Mexico, that's the only games that are aired on, on TV, you know, and it, it's it's funny that certain certain teams kind of have that with, with certain countries, you know what I mean, and it just develops fan bases in these areas, you know, where it's the only thing, I know, like the, the Seattle Mariners, I think, are really big in Japan, 
and it's because those games are actually aired over there. It's just it's kind of weird the way that works, and I guess it's smart for certain franchises if somehow you can get those exclusive deals in certain countries, man, builds that international fan base. So, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I'm sure it's it's uh it's just how much money you want to spend, yeah. like like most things in life. Right. Right. Well, you know, one thing I've never asked you, you know, we've had you on a lot, but, you know, I know we've talked about kind of your career in Europe, things like that, but I don't think I've ever actually really asked you, how the heck did you get your start in motorsports? I mean, what, what was your gateway drug? I mean, what, what was the what, what was the opener, you know, because I know a lot of people, you know what I mean, their their dad's race, things like that. I mean, what was your first like, you know, what, what was your first I guess, guess gateway into motorsports where you went, oh, man, I like this. This is what I want to do um so so my dad was a was a landscape contractor so the farthest thing from from a from a race car driver or being involved in motorsports but he he actually lost his father at a pretty young age when he was about uh 12 or 13 years old and um one of his fondest memories that he ever had with his dad was was going to to motor races um and they actually went to to a 500 uh when he was a kid he doesn't remember much of it but but he was there nonetheless and um, so kind of from like a young age, I was an only child and my dad was quite a young dad and such. So to kind of have the similar kind of memory that he had with his father, he started taking me to the, the kart races at Laguna Seca. And um, so was kind of there watching Michael drive, Denardi, um, you know, Max Pappas, uh, Damata, you know, a, a lot of these these guys in the golden era of, of, of cart, which, which became champ car, obviously. Um, and so that was kind of our, our yearly trip that we took um, as our father son bonding trip, if you will. And so that was kind of the, the first introduction to motorsports, but still through, through my young years, you know, I played, you know, T-ball and um, basketball and soccer and peewee football and all, and all that sort of thing. And then for my 10th birthday, he took me to, to Las Vegas, um, to kind of do a like go kart experience, go kart school, um, and it was supposed to be kind of just a three day kind of gift uh, to kind of drive in a go kart. And at the end of it, um, the the guy was like, he, you know, Alex is is actually pretty good, and he picked it up fairly quickly, and you should look at getting him in a karting. And my dad was like, well, you're just trying to sell me a go kart, and, and kind of dismissed it. But then for kind of the the weeks and months after that, I kept like telling my dad how much, you know, I wanted to do it again and all this stuff. So he finally kind of caved and signed me up for a, an arrive and drive go-kart program at, at Sonoma Raceway at Tears Point. And um, yeah, kind of all just snowballed from there. Yeah. Well, and I know still to this day, your dad, I mean, he's highly involved in, in your program. It's funny because you said he came from landscaping and stuff, you know, but, but now, I mean, he's, you know, he's highly involved, right? I mean, he, he's got a really good knack for the business side of this and, and things like that, right? Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he's been there since literally, obviously, day one in Las Vegas through every race. He hasn't missed a race, I'd say, 70% of the tests um he's been been my manager through everything that we dealt with in in europe and formula one and um never never really had anyone else um working for us um other than than him and i so we kind of learned the ins and outs of the business together and and now he's um you know pretty uh kind of highly regarded in the young junior driver category for for american kids and, and he looks after three or four um, drivers coming through the, the, the road to Indy program. And then um, he's kind of made a career, a new career for himself as a, as a motorsports manager, which is, which is pretty spectacular to see considering it was all kind of on the job training that he learned yeah. through, through the processes with me. So um, yeah, he's been instrumental in, in really everything and, and wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today with, without his influence and without his help. Well, we got a whole lot more, too, to catch up on here, Alex. But uh, we, we've got to take a uh, commercial break, and we'll be back with more with Alex Rossi here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver and Alex Rossi here, hanging tight in hour number one. Welcome to everybody tuning in on uh, Sirius XM Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio, and uh, also on uh, the American Forces Network, as well as Sports Byline USA, Apple Podcasts, Podcast One, and everywhere else you listen to the show. Uh, Alex, you know, let, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, when you went and raced in Europe. In the last year, Autosport had, you know, kind of a top 50 drivers type of thing, and I think you were number six on the list. And obviously, I know we, we've talked about your time in Europe before, but, you know, in, in coming back here to the States and how, you know, there was actually a lot of people because of your last name, things like that, they didn't really associate you as being an American driver. And it, it's kind of the past three or four years has been a process, you know what I mean, a, of, you know, almost rebuilding, you know, Alex Rossi or – uh, you know, but, you know, you see something like that where now all of a sudden, you know, you know, Formula One, the, the doors closed there. You went to IndyCar, you found a home, you're one of the top guys in the sport. You know, now you see the guys in Europe and things like Autosport recognizing you going, oh, man. I mean, is, is that a little bit justifying for you going, you know, it, it's like kind of like, hey, you guys maybe should have taken a chance on me, you know, and, and obviously, you know, you're completely happy with where you're at now in your career, you know, but but is there part of you that, that kind of puts a little bit of smile on your face because you're getting that recognition in Europe now? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, to, I'll be honest with you. I never felt like I, I felt really at home in Europe from from the beginning and, and I was able to be fortunate enough to be in teams that were good enough to win in, in every series that I competed in over there and, um, you know, kind of got to F1 for the most part on, on merit. And so I never felt as though there wasn't kind of a, 
a respect or a, or at least an, a knowledge that, you know, I had the, the capability of getting to F1. It was solely that Formula One is a very, very money driven sport. And at the end of the day, if you're not a Lewis Hamilton to a Sebastian Vettel to a Kimi Raikkonen type thing, there's probably eight to nine to 10 guys maybe that legitimately get paid um, to, to provide driving services in Formula One. And the other guys, while they get a paycheck, there's something else that they're bringing to the table. So, you know, I'll, I'll use a, a Carlos Sainz, for example, who's a supremely talented driver, was very good in, in the, the kind of lower formulas and, and one and everything that he did. But his father owned uh, a lot of the um, uh, a, a fuel station in Spain. Um, and I'm drawing a blank on, on the name of it now, but it's a, a, like an equivalent of a shell, but in Spain only. And he was able to kind of subsidize with Red Bull shelving space and display cases in all of his gas stations for a trade um, to help, you know, offset his son's racing crew, right? So yes, Carlos is a very good driver, but he would have never gotten the Red Bull deal had his father not had the gas stations to be able to display Red Bull products more predominantly than, say, a Monster or another type of energy drink competitor, which for Red Bull is is brand value and awareness. So yeah. there's always some backstory to, to most of the guys in F1, unless you're kind of a, a superhuman superstar like a Lewis or a Max Verstappen or something where, you know, it's purely um, they got their own talent and I'm not saying that I was in that category, but what I am saying is that, you know, we were just relying on that. We weren't, we didn't have anything else really to offer a team. And, and ultimately in my mind, that's one of the biggest downfalls of formula one is if it costs so much for these manufacturers to run each year, they need help from drivers. And uh, that's not really the way it should be. Yeah, No, I agree with you there. And it, it just seems funny because I think motorsports and obviously, you know, the U S is a little bit different, but, uh, you know, it's still very much the same. And it, it's, you know, it used to be, you just could be a driver. Now it's, you know, what, what's your social media following? What's your business, business connections, what's your media value? You know, what, what, you know, do you do any TV? Do you have a YouTube channel? You know, it, like there's so much yeah. more now. And it's like, it's kind of crazy, especially in the last 10 years, this massive shift we've seen, uh, whether you're Alex Rossi racing IndyCar, you're Jim Beaver racing off road or, or, you know, or, or somebody in Europe, you know, it's just funny that the whole business model and what a driver brings to the table is so completely different now than it was even a decade ago, you know? No, it is. And, and, and in a way, it's, it's kind of always existed, I think, to, to some degree. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely these days, as, as kind of the fan bases change and, and the budgets seemingly seem to go higher and higher each year, um, you know, teams, their businesses, right? And, and first and foremost, the team owners need to keep their lights on and, and feed their families at home as well. So I, I understand where it comes from, but it's a, it's very, it's a frustrating dynamic if you're on the the driver side of things trying to, to get a deal done. But, you know, ultimately, as you said, it's, it's the same across all, all different forms of motorsports, uh, whether it's off-road or IndyCar or go-karts or Formula One or what have you. Yeah. Well, you know, let's talk about you a little bit because you're one of the few guys, a lot of guys, you know, they, they're scared to kind of branch out. And you've kind of become like one of those everymans, like I'll drive anything with wheels, you know. And obviously you're in IndyCar. We see you at 24 Hours of Daytona. You've gone and done the Baja 1000 with Honda. You know, you went down to Australia and did some supercar racing. Like, it seems like you just genuinely enjoy driving anything and you like kind of putting yourself out of your element, you know, so you can learn a little bit. I, I, that's one thing I've always admired. Like you're one of those guys like a Mario Andretti and, you know, and a Robbie Gordon and the, you know, there's quite a few. I mean, it looks like uh, Fernando Alonso's kind of got into that where he just wants to drive everything, you know, but I feel like you as a driver, you just, you just, you know, like being behind the wheel. I do. Yes. Um, it, and it, it's kind of funny how it all, all happened. You know, I, I, I'll admit, I, I never really went out looking for any of it. Um, except for probably Baja, um, because, you know, I've been a fan of, of that event for a long time. And when I met Jeff Proctor back in 2017, um, you know, I kind of <laughs> alluded to the fact that I'd love to, to, to race for him one day. And, and he was like, okay, we'll stay in touch and, and we'll see if we can make it happen type thing. But, you know, the, the thing in Australia came about because, um, you know, Michael Andretti has a, has a partnership with a V8 team down there. Uh, and it's called Walkinshaw and Andretti United, and they were running a, 
a kind of a third car for the Bathurst 1000, which is their Indy 500 over there. And they were running kind of a, uh, I don't know what, what the correct term is anymore, but like a wild card car. And um, so when Michael asked if I'd be willing to do it, obviously, for sure, like I'm not ever going to say no to something like that. And then the, the, the endurance stuff with um, Acura Team Penske, you know, that, that all came through Honda. So after, you know, we were starting to have a lot of really good success in IndyCar and winning races together and, um, you know, fighting for championships, everyone at HPD and Honda was happy. And um, they had a, a need for a, a third driver for the endurance events, um, you know, the 24 hours Daytona, 12 hours Sebring, Petit Le Mans, et cetera. And so, you know, they asked if I'd be willing to do that. And, and you're never going to, you know, pass up an opportunity to drive for, for Team Penske in a, in a class leading um, car uh, because, you know, ultimately, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to drive in Daytona in, in different classes and go for class wins, but the opportunity to, to go for an outright, you know, victory in one of those endurance events doesn't come along very often. And you know that if you're driving for, for Team Penske, it's going to be good equipment. So that was, a, that was an easy decision as well. So I've been very fortunate to, to kind of have these things come together and, and then fall into my lap in, in a way. And, um, you know, it's, it's just funny timing how it all kind of happened at the same time, you know, with Baja, my debut there in 2018, and then Daytona uh, coming quickly there after that in 2019, and then Bathurst uh, in October of 2019. So it's been a wild ride and, and look forward to continuing it. And hopefully um, we can get some wins in, in at least one of those things pretty soon. Yeah. How, how weird is it for you to, to be walking into a Penske garage? Because 90, 95% of the time, you know, obviously you're, you're, uh, you're competing against them on track. How, how weird is it for you all of a sudden to be wearing a, you know, a Penske driver's suit and walking into that garage area? You know, it's, it was, <laughs> it was strange for, I think everyone, me, <laughs> them, my team, uh, Andretti Autosport and IndyCar, like everyone was like, How's this going to work? But, you know, Team Penske is a, a very big organization. And so every time that I go to the shop, every time that, you know, I'm on conference calls or whatever, you know, everyone gets it. Like everyone's super respectful of each other's kind of place. And there's no crossover in engineers either. So yeah. it's really easy to just not talk about IndyCar um, other than socially, right? So there's yeah. never a feeling that, you know, I'm being put in a weird place or they're being – put in a weird place and having to hide things, you know, it's, it's a very different kind of program. It's just kind of the name is there. So um, it's, it's, it's the, the weirdest part is, you know, team Penske is a very kind of corporate business type kind of look. And so for, for those events, like I actually shave my face and um, <laughs> you know, all of my Andretti mechanics love to break my balls about that. Every time that I come to an, an IndyCar event, after one of the, the Penske tests or races or whatever. And they're like, Oh, I see how it is. I think it's like, <laughs> you know, they just love to give me crap about it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a uniform, right? So you kind of got to oblige by, by each team's rules, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Well, going back to talking about 24 hours of Daytona, I, I want to ask you, cause I think we're going back to like 2014, 15. I can't remember the day, the year, but you drove out of all the weird things you've driven. You drove a Delta wing, dude. How how was that? Because yep. those things are one; they're just bizarre to look at. But that got that has to drive like unlike anything you've ever been behind the wheel of, right? Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest; I'm not even going to be politically correct. It was one of the worst things I think I've ever driven. Um, it was very fast around Daytona. Like, don't get me wrong; like we qualified fourth overall, like outright. Like it was. It was fast. Um, I think it was like somewhere near 15 miles an hour quicker than the the DP cars in the straight line. Um, and then kind of gave all that time back up in the infield, but it was just a rocket ship on the oval. So it was, it was unique. It was very ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Um, and ultimately, you know, it, it didn't work because, you know, race cars should have, there's a, there's a certain element of, of physics that work for a race car. Yeah. And this, this kind of tried to defy it all. And while it had moments of speed, it ultimately just wasn't a very well-balanced, well-performing car in corners or braking. Um, it was just a rocket ship in a straight line. So I think had it ever made it to Le Mans, which honestly was its original intention, yeah. um, or even Indianapolis, 
uh, for a period of time, that was going to be the, the new Indy car. Um, you know, I think it would have been exceptionally fast, but um, for what it was trying to do in IMSA in, in America on road courses, it was, it was not, not made for it in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about all these different series, things you've driven, you know, at this point, is there anything out there where you'd still like to drive it or any events, uh, you know, one-off events, you know, is there any bucket lists like down the road, like you're going, you know, at some point it'd be, it'd be kind of fun to go and do that. Um, you know, I want to do more of the desert races, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, the, the scheduling doesn't really allow for anything except for, for the 1000, yeah. um, unfortunate maybe a, a wrong word because ultimately i think that's the best race you can do but you know i'd love to do um some some other desert races and then also i mean i've never driven a cup car i'm not saying that that i'm looking to do that anytime soon but definitely before you know i hang up the racing helmet i'd love to do some some events in nascar and some of the uh, restrictor play tracks because as wild as it looks it looks uh pretty awesome as well yeah. Any, uh, you ever, uh, I know you and Ron Caps are buddies, you know, you ever told Caps, Hey, I'd like to, uh, like to try my hand at your, uh, funny car. There is not a chance in hell <laughs> I would ever get in a funny car. He's, he's talked to me about it. Like they have a two seater one and I, at no way. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah, and it's funny because Antron Brown and uh, Steve Torrance and, and Caps are all good friends of mine. But I was out at the NHRA race in Phoenix. You know, and I, you can sit in a car like Antron's or something like that. And, you know, and sit in there. And I just go, you know, this is this is another level of crazy. You know, I'm just like, there's something about you top fuel and funny car that. I appreciate what they do. And you look at those in cars and the forces and like, I'm kind of with you. Like I have zero interest in trying that. Like, no, just don't, you know, I don't know. It's hard to say. No, it's, hard to it's, say. It's, a, it's a whole nother level of crazy, man. Like it's, it's, it, it, if, if you haven't been, um, you could kind of maybe wrap your head around it. Like, yeah, that's really fast or yeah, that's, that's crazy. But yeah, I can do it type thing. Cause I'm a, I'm a badass or whatever. The moment you go there and you start crying when they turn the engine on, cause yeah. the, the nitro methane fumes are so much, it's like, yep, not made for this. Not going to do it. Yeah. Not, not interested. So a uh, huge amount of respect to those guys. Ron's a, Ron's a good buddy of mine. And what's amazing to me about Ron and, and probably it applies to most of those guys is as much as they, you know, ultimately drive straight for four seconds. They're all very good at like driving cars. Like I went to a karting event with Rom and he was, it was me, Ron, Chase Elliott. Um, there's a Napa, Napa event in, in Florida and Ron was by far the best. And for the rest of this interview, hit us up on Apple podcasts because uh, we're up against a time break and we'll be back after this on the general tire down and dirty show powered by Polaris razor conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, and we're back here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, thanks to everybody for joining us on uh, Dan Patrick Radio, Sirius XM Channel 211. If you want the rest of the show, hit us up on iTunes. Actually, it's called Apple Podcasts now. You can get the whole hour, too. Toby Price will be jumping into some more motorsports news, a little bit of sim racing talk, and uh, you know what? That same RSS feed, that will get you the rest of this Alexander Rossi interview. I know, man, he and I went almost an hour, but uh, hey, we got uh, hard time breaks here uh, nationally. So uh, we're going to have to uh, air that in its entirety on our RSS feed. Just one more reason to go over there and smash that subscribe button. But, uh, yeah, we've got uh, a whole lot more coming up in hour number two if you're tuning in on AFN or Sports Byline. 
line. Don't go anywhere. I got to tell you, things are really, really going to ramp up. And anytime you got Toby Price on air, uh, man, here is a guy who loves to have fun, and he's one of the baddest dudes to ever sit on a dirt bike. And, uh, yeah, we're going to re-air that interview from earlier this season, and uh, you definitely, definitely don't want to miss it. So, yeah, we are uh, going to take a, a short break. And, um, you know, I think we're probably going to get some fan questions in hour number two as well. So definitely hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter or all forms of social media, but uh, probably be answering the uh, fan questions from Twitter. So hit us up over there and we'll definitely get those asked in hour number two. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I, these questions, I guarantee you're going to come way out of left field this week. That's what I'm looking forward to. Anyways, uh, we are going to take a short, short, short commercial break. And when we return, it's going to be hour number two here of the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You don't want to go anywhere. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, welcome to hour number two of the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Thanks to everybody tuning in on Sports Byline on the American Forces Network, as well as Apple Podcasts, Down and Show.com, Podcast One. I don't know what Stitcher, Spotify, everywhere. You, we, we're all over the place. Thank you guys once again for making us one of the top motorsports radio shows on the planet. And a big shout out to uh, Alexander Rossi for uh, taking up a huge chunk of hour number one. Like I said before, that interview will air in its entirety on our RSS feed over there in Apple Podcasts. Go and smash that subscribe button. But uh, we got a lot to talk about, man. Sim racing blowing up. It's the only thing you can race right now, right? Race is shut down. We do have some scheduling changes. We're going to get to talking about those after the break, as well as everything, all the bananas shenanigans that's happening over on iRacing and uh, a whole, whole hell of a lot more so yeah you guys don't uh, don't want to go anywhere uh because this hour number two is going to be a cranking and uh yeah so uh please hit me up with those questions it's at jim beaver 15 on social media we will definitely definitely get to those and uh, i don't know maybe during this break i'm going to text uh, my media director chris leone he actually works for me part-time and he also works for uh, iRacing part time. We got so much iRacing talk to to talk about, man. It would be fun to get him on and uh, really dissect everything that's going on in sim racing world because right now, uh, it's off the chain, literally. Um, I, I everybody I know is literally buying steering wheels, pedals, sim rigs, uh, gaming computers. 
literally, you want to talk about a run on toilet paper and bottled water? No, we're having a run on computers and steering wheels. And I, I guarantee you Logitech shot, uh, stock is going through the roof right now with the amount of steering wheels they're selling for uh, iRacing. It is bananas. I mean, the gaming industry is doing well. But I got to tell you, the sim racing community, because there's no other motorsports going on, it is legitimately, it is blown up. It was blowing up, but now it's just like, uh, its trajectory is just absolutely insane. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many people I'm getting hit up with wanting to join my sim team, wanting a code for iRacing, um, you know, anything. And it's, speaking of that, do you want a code for iRacing? 50% off. Use that coupon code pr Jim Beaver. That's pr Jim Beaver. like my segue there. I've done it a few times. pr Jim Beaver. That will get you 50% off at iRacing. PR dash Jim Beaver. So know you guys are at home. I know you listen to podcasts. I know you listen to radio shows. PR dash Jim Beaver. Fifty percent off. Yeah, fifty percent at iRacing. All right, we'll be back after this on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show powered by Polaris Razor. Kind of stumbled there. It's probably because we had an epic interview with Alex Rossi in hour number one. Hour number two, we got uh, a best of interview with Toby Price we're going to get to. But before we get to that, yes, motorsports has been on a pause. Uh, we've got, uh, I guess, IndyCar rescheduled. Chris and I will talk about that. We've got NHRA rescheduled. Supercross going to be doing a fall season. 
All that being said, I got my media director, Chris Leone, who uh, I guess we should say, I say my media director, Chris Leone. Chris, you're not only my media director, you also split time. You're half with Down and Dirty Show Jim Beaver, and then you're half with uh, iRacing, which makes the next segment perfect because you can talk about both. Chris Leone, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, thanks, Jim. I am just doing my best to keep my head on straight because uh, I have to tell you, when we started this year at iRacing, we didn't expect to essentially become the FIA, but here we are. Yeah. Well, and I, I've had a bunch of people hit me up, and I said, you know, I said, this is the equivalent of, uh, of being in high school and this smoking hot new girl um, from some town that nobody's <laughs> ever heard of comes to high school and now all of a sudden the smoking hot new girl has every guy in the school's attention. And I feel like I racing right now is that new girl. And she just walked into high school and it's like, it's like the first week and every dude is vying for her attention. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I really can't think of a better analogy. I mean, <laughs> we have, we've had a ton of stuff going on certainly over the, over the past few years, but you know, it's been all geared towards pro gamers. We have the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, in which obviously you're a team owner. Uh, we've had our World of Outlaws World Championships. We've had the Porsche eSports Super Cup. Uh, we've had, you know, we've had iRacing Rallycross. But now we're the ones putting on series for a lot of the big names who race in the real world. Obviously, the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series has gotten very big very quickly. We've got the IndyCar iRacing Challenge that launches this weekend. Um, you know, we did an event with IMSA last weekend to replace the 12 Hours of Sebring. Um, it's, it's been unreal. Bananas. And pretty much everybody who you can think of has been working, you know, with us, has been racing with us. Uh, we have had just such a groundswell of support and Honestly, trying to keep all of these events straight and trying to hit all of our deadlines to make sure things make it to TV and streams has been probably the biggest challenge of my entire career in motorsport. But it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, well, and it, this all goes hand in hand. And, I, you know, and I, I'd said this, obviously, you know, the last show we aired, uh, you know, we've got to talk about a little bit about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. But I said, you know, I don't want this show to be about that. I think there's too much on radio. It's all they focus on. So we've tried to focus on kind of the stuff that still is going on in the world of motorsports. I mean, we've got some crazy stuff going on. Big news. I mean, uh, NHRA, they've got an abbreviated schedule. NASCAR, they, you know, I think we're still waiting on a formalized schedule from them. Uh, Supercross. I am thinking it looks like maybe they're going to be doing a fall schedule to wrap up the season, probably after pro motocross wraps up. But to me, the big thing out of all of this is Chris, there is no more month of May IndyCar. They're going to be running the GP July 4th that weekend as a double header with NASCAR. First time in history, the two premier divisions of IndyCar and NASCAR have got together. And then the Indy 500 is going to be the month of August. What on earth? Like, this is something 100 years in. We never thought we would see it's happening. Um, but that has meant that iRacing, by default, it all ties in together. Uh, like you had said, you guys are now the sanctioning body for all the other sanctioning bodies, I guess. it's This world in one month, I don't know, dude. When we saw each other at the Mint 400, I never thought we'd be having the conversations we're having today. Yeah, I didn't either. And I certainly wasn't prepared for it especially because um, obviously every single day being out in Las Vegas, we were working and, uh, you know, obviously I was there for a week, came right back in, got right back to the office on Monday and was really looking forward to that weekend. And uh, I haven't really <laughs> had a weekend in quite a few weekends. So um, it's been, it, it, yeah, it's been a lot. But I mean, you know, we're, we're obviously very fortunate. We're in a great position where we're able to help, NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, all of these race teams, all of these drivers still be able to represent their partners, still be able to put on an entertaining and exciting show. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah, you know, we there are things that you do in the video game that you can't do in real life. There are things that aren't modeled in the video game at, quite after the way they are in real life. But, you know, at this point, we have racing. You know, it's it's not physical racing, but it's still real racing in the sense that drivers are doing their absolute best to get good at it. And, you know, even the guys who it's also funny because it's a bit of an equalizer where, 
you know, we saw on the FS1 NASCAR race last week, we saw Garrett Smithley and Timmy Hill running up front, and we saw Jimmy Johnson, uh, let's say, learning on the fly. Um, I don't expect that to be the case for Jimmy Johnson, you know, this coming week. I know who he has been putting in time with, and he has been putting in time with the absolute best sim racers that I can think of. But, you know, it's it's been kind of a fun adventure to see all of these real world racers try to adapt their skills to the sim and see which ones have already been competitive and running up front. Well, and you know, that being said, there are a few, few real world racers that, uh, that it's not like they're newbies to the sim, you know, and, uh, obviously they've had a leg up and I know, you know, just in that last interview we did in the last hour with Alex Rossi, you know, he, he has spent some time in sims, but it was these, million dollar you know full-on simulators which is i racing is about the closest thing you can get to that but it's still accessible to everybody but as alex had said he's like there still is a little bit of difference and he goes as much as i racing is real life there's still so much to learn and he goes i feel like i'm a rookie all over again starting from scratch not to say he's not going to pick it up a whole lot faster than somebody else but somebody like rossi or jimmy johnson who are at the top of their craft i think it's awesome seeing that they're actually human chris yeah, no, exactly. And I have to say, guys like Jimmy, guys like Rossi, guys like Kyle Bush, all the credit in the world to them for being willing to embrace this and being willing to have to relearn all of the things that they learned as rookies all over again. You know, it's it's tough. And the fact that they're having to do it on a totally different stage and then kind of having to deal with the, oh, you're so good in real life, but you can't drive the sim thing. It's because, you know, there are a lot of people who think the sim is easier. There, But, you know, there are just as many, if not more, who would tell you, no, the sim is harder because it's it's totally different. It relies on totally different sensory perception. It's being good in the race car doesn't have as much to do with being as good in the sim necessarily as you'd think sometimes. You know, there are some guys who, you know, it just – the, the seat of the pants feel that they have, it doesn't quite translate even with force feedback and, you know, some of the really high tech rigs. It's just, you're relying on different things. You're relying on different levels of adrenaline. You're relying on different, you know, it's, it is very much its own skill to master. And while yes, obviously it is very close to the real thing, you know, yeah, if, if you've never used iRacing before and you're jumping in, I don't care how many cup championships you've won or Indy 500s you've won, there are going to be growing pains. So all the credit in the world to these guys for being willing to embrace that and being willing to have to embrace that in public on very short notice to go run these invitational events. All right, Chris, we're going to run up against a time break, but we got all this stuff going on on iRacing, man. Give us the details on when people can actually tune in and watch all these pro guys behind the wheel of a sim with iRacing. Oh, man, if you were looking to watch pros, we've got so many options. Saturdays at 4 p.m., we have the IndyCar iRacing Challenge. Uh, that starts this weekend um, at Watkins Glen. Jimmy Johnson is you know, as you've said, is involved, um, but most of the real-world IndyCar field. The NASCAR races run on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern on uh, FS1. Uh, they will, for the most part, be simulcast on Fox. Check with your local affiliate, but that's all the Cup Series guys and a handful of Xfinity and truck guys and, oh, yeah, Dale Jr. and Bobby Labonte and Greg Bittle, so that's not too bad. Uh <laughs> For the pro gamers, you do have the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series on Monday and eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series every other Tuesday. Wednesdays, there are going to be some World of Outlaws events that are on Dirt Vision. Um, they're alternating weeks between sprint cars and dirt late models. And then, uh, you know, starting next weekend, um, some, some other things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, I'm working real hard on putting iRacing Rallycross together, and there are some big names behind that one that I cannot wait to be able to share. Uh, so stay tuned on that because IRX is really going to be an all-star event that's going to look like everything we've always wanted Rallycross to be. Yeah, I am. I am excited. 
like you said, rally cross. We've got just about everything. We've got something for everybody. I know you and I, we've got something hopefully by this time next week we'll be able to go public with. Uh, but we've got something for the off-road community I think they're going to be really excited about. I will just leave that there, and that's it. We'll plant that seed for next <laughs> week, Chris. But, uh, man, good times, Chris. Thank you for taking uh, the time to call in. I know you've been uber busy, as we all have. Uh, and we've got to take a short commercial break, and we'll be back with more here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show Powered by Polaris Razor. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode beam patterns and rgbw accent lighting with adapt it's easier than ever to own the night don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain get into gear with gsp xtv and let us redefine your adventure the gsp advantage of quality and performance sets a standard for utv axles we strive to provide premium atv and utv axles to keep you shreddy ready kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with gsp xtv With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. And available internationally on the American Forces Network. Well, I'd like to welcome uh, one of my guests to the show this week, my uh, good buddy Toby Price, who I just saw here at the uh, Parker 425. Uh, I guess, uh, man, you uh, what did you say? You you had like literally one day in uh, in Australia, turn around from Dakar till uh, you headed stateside, man. You got to be uh, you've been uh, been a crazy start to the year for you, buddy. Yeah, for sure, mate. It's um, definitely been a crazy start to the year. Uh, Dakar went fairly well for us. Uh, we definitely had a rush down there, but um, uh, we got out of there safe, uh, all had peace, and um, yeah, like halfway through the event, we got a uh, a phone call to um, see if I wanted to compete uh, in the Parker 425 with Robert Johnson in the Chattanooga whiskey truck. So um, yeah, made a call on that. Uh, basically, once I finished Dakar, I flew home the next day straight after the event, and. Uh, I was at home in Australia for, yeah, basically 24 hours and um, switched my bags over, did some washing and uh, flew straight here to the States. So it was a, a wild old trip. Um, yeah, we're just kind of catching up a little bit now, but uh, other than that, it's all going really well. Yeah, it, it, it sometimes, do you kind of forget what your uh, what your house looks like in Australia? Because I've got a feeling you're, you're hardly ever there, man. Well, I, I don't even remember. I've got a house in Australia. I, I keep forgetting I've even got one. So it's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a wild time. It definitely keeps you very busy and on the road, but uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, you don't get these uh, chances and opportunities all the time, so uh, I try and grab it with both hands, hook in and go full gas and, and have some fun with it. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll talk about the Dakar Rally in a minute because I do want to dive into that and some of the talk, but uh, let's go back here a little ways. Um, I mean, you've kind of, uh, you know, it, it seems like at some point, you know, all the greats on two wheels and I mean, we can go down, go down the list of, uh, you know, off-road racers here in North America. And then, uh, you know, some of the, some of the legends of Dakar, and it seems like they always, at some point in their career transition to four wheels. And you're one of the few that's kind of active on, on both two and four wheels, man. But, uh, uh, you know, how's that kind of been? I know you, you've started picking up some more work. We've seen you in the desert here, you know, stateside and in Baja quite a bit. I know, uh, you and, uh, you and Nasser had, uh, a pretty good run, uh, you know, you know, in Jesse Jones truck there at, uh, at the Baja 1000. I mean, how, how's this kind of, uh, I don't want to call it a transition cause you're still very much on, on two wheels, man, but how, how's the kind of the four wheel thing been going? I mean, you guys are obviously wicked fast. Yeah, look, that's it. It's uh, it's definitely keep me very busy and on my toes. And uh, yeah, like I say, I'm very active active on both. But uh, motorcycles uh, is what's my my normal job and uh, keeps my bills paid and, uh, and and my lights on at home in Australia. And uh, I've been very lucky enough to land on my two feet uh, with, with some really good solid drives um, here in in the states. And uh, then having my own truck uh, in Australia, I get to do some events back home, the Pink Desert Race and stuff. So it's, yeah, like I'm very active in, in both uh, areas. It definitely puts a lot on the plate. And um, but then yeah, like at the end of the day, the the two wheels is main priority. It takes 
um, running those or everything. So if there's an event uh, that's four wheel um, racing wise, I, I if there's an event on two wheels, I have to do the two wheel side of things, which is which is fair enough. It's um, I don't want to um, yeah my, I don't want to retire off two wheels anytime soon. I still think I've got another five to eight years in um, in racing on two wheels, but. Uh, then again, I don't know if a drive came up on four wheels. It was just feeling like at the right time and um, could keep me going forward. Uh, then, yeah, basically that, that time then might be to, to hang the helmet up on two wheels. But, uh, yeah, look, we had a good solid run at the Baja 1000 with NASA. It was kind of cool to have him over here in America and uh, in Mexico um, for the event and for the race and uh, to finish a second there. But that's pretty much really my best finish I've had, uh, I guess, in a trophy truck. And, um other, otherwise, yeah, I've just had some small, minor little parts and issues and things that are breaking, and um, but everyone has those at this stage. And uh, once we kind of work it all out and, and get on top of it, hopefully, yeah, we can start winning some events and uh, look to the future of um, hopefully going four wheels, and uh, that might hopefully be a, a job that I can race for, four wheels full time. Well, you know, it, it, I got to ask you about the Parker 425 because it, you're, you're kind of humble in what you said. You said some mechanical problems. Dude, there's an in-car video of you, and you're driving the truck by hand, like literally working the throttle with your hand. Like, <laughs> Tell me the story behind that because, I mean, th- th- that oh. takes another level of concentration to be able to do that because you're so used to your foot. I mean, I guess maybe the hand throttle, you know, used to a bike, but it's still like, dude, that, that's wild. Yeah, that's it for sure. Um, I don't know. I, there's just something in, in embedded in me that uh, I don't like giving up. I don't like quitting, and um, and I don't like letting people down. So it's uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we were running in a good position. We we're in third, trying to chase down uh, Harley Letner in, in second, and um, everything was going really well till the third lap, and uh, we we're getting ready to push and uh, actually have a have a really good uh, solid attack and a good go at the third lap, and literally just kind of come out of. Um, out of the pit lane there and uh, got onto the, the first big main straight. Um, and, yeah, just uh, a mechanical issue with a uh, the, uh, the fly-by-wire uh, to the throttle. Uh, one of the motors locked up and it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't open the butterflies and actually, yeah, that just wouldn't give you wouldn't give you any gas. So, basically, you're trying to put your foot through the pedal and um, the, the truck's just sitting there idling. So, yeah, we uh, were sitting there just trying to think, how can we fix it? And we were just, uh, we had no spare little motor to, to switch over for the, the fly-by-wire or anything, and then um, basically, yeah, like I've seen probably in the previous few years, uh, some guys have done that, basically just made a mechanical throttle, and um, so we took the shoelace um, out of the boot and uh, wrapped it around the linkage in the throttle, disconnected all the um, the fly-by-wire stuff, so it basically made it free, and um, yeah, put the, the shoelace string through the dash, and um, yeah, tried that, and basically, yeah, it had, it had like a return on the on the on the butterflies and um yeah once we knew it wasn't getting going to get stuck and jammed on us then uh we thought we'll give it a go and go full gas and uh the first yeah for sure the first 10 10 15 miles a little bit nerve-wracking because you still have that bit of a feeling that maybe it might lock on and you don't want a, a like a 900 horsepower trophy truck uh wedged and wide open full gas and trying to pull the thing up so uh we we're very ready for the, the main power switch and everything to switch stuff off but uh yeah it kind of works fairly fairly damn well and um uh like you say i'm, I'm kind of used to being a, a throttle in the right hand so it was uh not really too much out of uh out of place but um like i say yeah a couple of times when you needed the gas i was still finding i was trying to put my foot through the floor just to give her a bit of a bit of a hop and um yeah that still wasn't working you just had to try and remember it was all in the hand so uh the last lap was pretty wild but in saying that we um I think I averaged like 65 miles an hour uh, with the foot throttle on the second lap, and I only averaged uh, 63, so I dropped, I think it was two miles an hour um, in, in speed. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely not scared to have a go, mate. And that's, uh, I, I love going flat out, and um, Robert Johnson gave us that chance in, in the truck to come and race here, and I just, yeah, felt like I just didn't want to let the guy down and not finish the race, and to still come across the line fifth with the... With uh, what we had go wrong, um, being basically down, and I think it was like 45 minutes trying to fix all that up, uh, yeah, we're quite stoked. We're still passing trucks and everything. Like, after we, we'd stopped, a few of them had passed us, and uh, 6100s and whatnot. So we're, we're making some moves with a, with a hand throttle, that was for sure. That's, uh, that's insane. I, I got to think, though, you know, it's like, 
is some of that maybe come from from Dakar because Dakar you you're out there in some of the remote, most remote places in the entire world and you're all by yourself and something mechanical goes wrong on your bike or something like that I mean you've got to kind of use your ingenuity to get the thing going again right or you're going to be out there for a while yeah. right yeah exactly that's right you're going to be standing out there for probably any anywhere from five to nine hours so it's um it's going to be a little bit of a MacGyver and um try and yeah come up with some wild and crazy ideas just to get you across the finish line sometimes and uh for sure that's uh, another area that i guess kind of helps me a little bit um to do some crazy and silly things but uh yeah I, i'd nearly put that one at the top of the list i i never thought i'd um have full control of a of a 900 horsepower trophy truck in the right hand and um trying to steer a truck for a full lap of 140 miles with one <laughs> hand and still carrying that type of speed so i'll uh I reckon I'll nearly be putting that one at the top of my list. Um, I guess then also, yeah, with the broken wrist uh, at Dakar last year. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, like I say, I just I just don't like giving up and I don't like stopping. And, um, yeah, you are, I just want to make the finish lines of, uh, of events. And as we went on a race, I guess I was trying to, yeah, wanted to try and break the internet doing something wild and crazy. And I think, yeah, uh, the response from it has been pretty wild here. I'm still in the States and... Um, every shop that I go to or something that they, they recognize that I'm over here for the Parker race. They straight to the uh, old hand throttle uh, story. And <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty wild and give me, uh, give me some knuckles and um, said I'm pretty bad ass. So yeah, look at the end of the day, I, I just love racing, having fun and enjoying it. And uh, yeah, it's just been good times to come over here and race um, some cars and some trucks. So it's been good. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I laugh and it's funny because uh you know, anybody that knows you, and I've got to know you pretty well, and I think most of the off-road community here in the States, I mean, we, we all know you pretty well. I feel like we've adopted you as your own, or our own, you know, you, you're, you're Australian, you raced a car, and, and it's for Australia, but all of us kind of lay, lay, lay a claim to Toby Price is you're, you're kind of half American, buddy. Yeah, mate, I'm very, very um, blessed and pumped with that. It's, uh, yeah, I get the kind of like the, what they call the honorary uh, off-road status, I guess. It's uh, been a been American citizen and off road, and um, yeah, look, uh, it's it's kind of cool. It's it's crazy to see the, the following that I do have here in America, even though I am Australian. But um, yeah, it's cool the support here and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I, I just think people just love it there. We uh, we hope we can have a go at everything we can and um, and and keep moving forward and try to just chase uh, everything that we can can get our hands onto. So it's uh, now I'm, I'm very lucky to have that that, that support here in America and. Uh, have great people that follow and um, yeah, keep up to date with what we're up to. So we just have to uh, yeah, try and keep at it full gas and um, doing wild and crazy things and try and win some events, mate. We'll be, we'll be stoked. And we'll be back with more with Toby Price when we return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We've got Toby Price on the line. And Toby, well, you know, and let's go back and talk. We haven't even really talked about this year's Dakar Rally, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I think, you know, obviously you're a multi-time winner of the Dakar Rally. You know what it takes to win that event, but, uh, you know, you're with one of the best teams in the world. You go into this event, and you guys are expecting to win, but, you know, once again, it is Dakar, and it is the hardest event, uh, you know, in the world to win. I mean, you know, going into one of these things, it's, it's I mean, how, you know, I don't even know if I can put it into perspective. I've never raced it, you know, and I, I've raced in Baja plenty, but, I mean, kind of draw some comparisons. How hard is it not only to – to win this event, Toby, but just just to finish the Dakar Rally. 
Man, that, that's exactly how you explain it. It's uh, it, it's a hard old challenge, and it, uh, just to make the finish line, that that in itself is a win to anybody, really. So to do that, um, that that's uh, the first thing you're trying to to knock off the list and and get sorted and just come home safe. And um, yeah, to be able to try and win it two times, like uh, in a way, like look, you, you've got to work hard for things. You've got to put a lot of time and effort into to like the writing and and bits and pieces like that. So, Make it all go go to plan, but then in saying that, also you you really do have to have a lot of luck and a lot of things fall your way and and go the right direction for you there. And uh, yeah, it's just yeah trying to piece it all together and just make a good uh, game plan and a strategy of um, of racing. And and sometimes you can have absolutely everything perfect and in the right direction, but basically there could be a guy that's starting back in 25th that gets between a guy that you're battling with in in the lead and he's not even really in contention to try and win, but uh, it can help you or it can hinder you uh, with, with it, your overall result. So if he you, you gets in between the guy that you're battling with, um, that just gives the, the guy uh, more room to try and catch you or, uh, or for you to catch them. So it's uh, a lot of things have just got to fall in the right place and, and right direction for you. And, uh, yeah, to, to say I've got, I've got two trophies at, sit at home, um, I never thought I'd even have one of the things that just... Uh, the, the the mountain you've got to climb to try and win that race it's just uh it it seems unachievable and um yeah when you do it it, it seems like a dream and just doesn't feel like it actually kind of happened but uh it's yeah it's just like basically riding from the east coast to the west coast and uh and trying to do it all in yeah 10 or 12 days so it's uh it's a, it's a wild old ride and um it's definitely a challenge it uh i don't know for some reason just keeps drawing us back and it's self-inflicted pain and torture really so it's uh, but yeah, we enjoy it. We love it, and um, yeah, we're always trying to line up with that race and uh, try and chase that number one place. Well, you know, and what I think is interesting about that rally too, especially for a guy like you that that does it on a bike. I mean, you know. I, I don't want to say it's any easier for guys in four wheels, but it's easier. I mean, I'll, I'll just go out and say it. I mean, you know, they, they can at least at some point kind of sit back in their seat on a stretch and, and take a little bit of a deep breath. I mean, you on a bike, I mean, it, it's just a split second and your your rally can be over. And at least I, I feel like the car and tr- truck guys, they, they've got a little bit of a chance to catch their breath and collect their thoughts. I feel like on a bike, that's got to be so intense because you've got to be – 100 percent on and you know and, and focused and you know how hard is that over the stretch of two weeks to keep that focus because you know unlike the car and truck guys where you can you, they can literally you know kind of take a breath you can't do that toby yeah exactly that's it it's uh not taking anything away from the guys that drive the cars like uh nasa and, and uh carlos signs and all them guys that they they travel at a really high rate of speed too and it's like they, there's a lot of concentration in that but uh yeah, like you say, it's just uh, there's there are sections there that they can kind of relax a lot more and just uh, sit there and kind of enjoy the ride and, and still be wide open on the throttle. But like for us, uh, we're trying to we're there by ourselves. We're trying to navigate. We're trying to ride the bike at speeds of yeah 90 to 120 mile an hour. I think that's roughly around your yeah, your 100 to 160 kilometers um, an hour in in, in uh, Australian torque basically, but. Uh, yeah, you, you, we're trying to do everything, and like I say, we we have to be the mechanic, we have to be the rider, we have to be the navigator, we have to be basically yeah, fit and fine, tuned, ready for the race, and um, yeah, we don't have any outside assistance or help, so uh, it just it all adds up, and just uh, yeah, not to, not to take anything away from them guys that drive the cars, it's just uh, it's it's definitely a whole different world to to be a motorcycle competitor in that race, and um, we have to do every bit of miles on the seat, and um, yeah, just to try and mentally prepare yourself for something like that. It just it really it really weighs you down. Um, it's a race that's basically designed to try and break man and machine. And um, yeah, if you you come out the other side of it uh, all in one piece and uh, with a trophy in your hand, um, that's that's an ultimate dream. But uh, just to even finish that race in the last place, it's still that's still a win at the end of the day too. Yeah. How was it this year? Because this was, you know, you've raced in South America for quite a while now, and and obviously it's different every single year, but you've kind of come to know what to expect. How was going to Saudi Arabia this year? I mean, that was complete shift for everybody. I mean, it was almost even playing field for everybody. You know, how was that shift for for not only you, but the team and, and just everybody in general? Because it's new country, you know, it's new terrain. Everything was new about this year's rally. Yeah, that's right, exactly. It was a completely different rally for us, and no one knew what to expect. No one knew 
the areas that we were going through, no one knew boy, how the people operated there. And, um, just, yeah, it just everything was a completely different rally for us. So uh, some of the areas we rode through actually felt like we were in South America, but then on top of that, it was, yeah, we just knew we were in a completely different race and uh, a different country. But, like, uh, yeah, the, the KDM team, we, we tried to do as much research as possible to be as prepared as we could be. But, um yeah, like I say, you just, like, you've just got to have a lot of luck go your way with that race sometimes and uh, and, and try and just piece everything together and, and make it all work. But uh, it was it was definitely a, a cool experience. At the end of the day, I, I've raced in uh, South America since uh, my first one was 2015. Um, and, yeah, like it was, it was, it was cool to actually, actually be in a different country for it. And it was kind of like a new rebirth style of race I guess and uh, kind of got you excited to go somewhere new somewhere different and uh, experience uh, another country so yeah we, we're, we're there for the next four years now so uh, we kind of know roughly what we're in for and basically we'll just yeah go back to the drawing board and start getting ready for 2021 it just it never it never ends and nothing slows down for us it's just uh, non-stop thinking about that car racing and uh, that's about it yeah well, you know, that being said, uh, you know, what, what's the plans for this year? Obviously, you said getting ready for the 2021 uh, Dakar Rally. I know, uh, obviously, you got the Fink there in Australia. You said you, you own your own truck down there. I know I saw Stadium Super Trucks is coming down there with a with a handful of races as well. I'm sure we might see a stateside. I mean, what's uh, – I'm sure you've got a lot of opportunities popping up uh, in front of you. What's, uh, what's 2020 look like for Toby Price? Yeah, exactly all that pretty much. We've, um, we've got some things lined up, yeah, with uh, – basically doing the world championship uh, on two wheels. Uh, we're trying to line up the thing to do Sink Desert Race with two wheels as well as as the four wheels uh, program we got there. Uh, yeah, we do some stadium super truck racing this year in Australia. Um, hopefully we can come back and do some more events in the trophy truck stuff here, either with Jesse Jones or uh, all Robert Johnson. Um, uh, basically, yeah, trying, basically the plan is to get back to the Baja 1000 at the end of the year in November. Um, would be cool to try and either win that race or get back on the podium there again um, after this year or after last year now. But uh, and then basically, yeah, we just try and um, fit in anything else we can kind of fit in along the way. So it's um, plenty of racing on on board and um, yeah, two and four wheels and yeah, we just like to go out and have fun and and enjoy uh, going at high high rates of speed. So. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll see and uh, assess everything as it's going along. And um, I don't know, I seem, to, I seem to struggle to say no to a lot of things. It's just uh, something gets offered and I'm like, yep, done. We'll sort it out and we'll go for it full gas. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to come, try and come over with uh, k and to do maybe a world championship UTV um, races over here. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll wait and see what we can kind of piece together and um, try and, uh, yeah, just keep myself uh, active and, flying around the world doing uh, doing some mad cool events. Yeah, well, and you mentioned, uh, you know, the UTV there and the side-by-sides, and i got to say, you know, I, uh, you know, here I am, a trophy truck guy, kind of racing full-time in, in side-by-sides now, but I know even at, at Dakar, you know, a couple of years ago, it was kind of an afterthought. Like, that was just a category nobody paid much attention to. Now, I mean, we've got some marquee racers, you know, in there, and it's really kind of coming to the forefront of Dakar where, you know, manufacturers are getting involved, things like that. You've mentioned, you know, doing some side-by-side racing. I know you've got, you know, you do some down in Australia. You're talking about coming here and doing the World Championship. I mean, for guy like you you know that's saying something i mean you you know you're running you know with one of the best programs in the entire world on two wheels you got some amazing opportunities on four and here you are talking about going side by side racing man how 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 much fun are you having behind the wheel of one yeah look honestly it's um for, for how much slack they they cop uh oh what basically i'd say three four years ago or five years ago um yeah honestly like it's uh it's kind of it's good cheap not cheap, affordable racing, but it's a, it's a lot more achievable than what you're trying to run a full fledged uh, trophy truck side of things with with a team. There, it just uh, the budget pretty much goes ten times as much as what you do you can put into a side by side. Like it's 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 as deep as your pocket can go to go and run a side by side. But uh, in 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 any, any way, it's basically it any seat time helps, and that's like uh, if I can get my seat um, my backside into one of those seats of a side by side, I I do it. It's uh, Somewhere along the way, it's going to help uh, refine driving in a trophy truck, or whether I go a bit of tarmac racing, or um, in in the stadium super truck stuff. So, uh, yeah, look, it's um, it's only like it's a category fairly new to the Dakar event, but now you're starting to see 
like Cyril de Bray and everything racing in one this year. And uh, it, 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 it's crazy. Like I say, it's, it's, uh, it's affordable, uh, closer and affordable racing. Right? So, uh, the majority of the people are running around instead of trying to, they got like a multi million dollar deal to, to try and go and run a, a full size trophy truck or a. Or a, uh, a like a Toyota or one of those minis in in the Dakar race. So it's um, yeah, the, the, that's all. It's all really taking off massive. And like you say, everyone here in America now seems to have one. Like yeah, everywhere you turn around, it's um, if someone doesn't have one, it's either a, a mate that's got one that they go out and and, and blast down to Glamis and have a, have a bit of fun there. And I'm doing a side by side races at home with Tim and doing one or two rounds, uh, I can't commit to a full season there just with the, the two-wheel program that I'm doing. But, um, yeah, I, I take my, my team out to the St. Desert Race and do some pre-running there. And it, they're just a really, really fun toy to have. And, it's um, yeah, it's any any bit of racing I can get into, I, I go with it full gas. Yeah, well, I got to ask one last question before we let you go, though. I know uh, King of the Hammers coming up. Uh, you know, obviously there's UTVs there. They got King of the Motos coming back. I mean, uh, has there ever been any itch to go and try your hand in the rocks? Uh, don't I was really, really close to trying to pull the trigger on that and, and going there this weekend. But uh, like I say, I haven't pre- I haven't been home for uh, about four weeks, so I I, I got home for one day, for twenty four hours, but. Uh, We've got a lot of things to sort out back home and uh, get on top of. And I was, like I say, I was like 99% close to uh, changing my flight uh, <laughs> to fly home. So I, I head home on Saturday and um, and get out of here. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I, I was nearly going to stay and just at least go and watch and check the event out to basically try and maybe, like, uh, I was either going to race or um, see if I could line something up or just maybe their plan for the future to come over and race it. But, uh these things don't match up at the moment. Um, got to get my uh, got to get myself home and sort some things out and go from there. But it's definitely uh, one that I've always wanted to come over and check out. It's just uh, yeah, the hammers is just everyone talks about it. It's basically like um, a motorhome city um, <laughs> that's out in the middle of nowhere, and it's uh, it's, it's really cool just to see that amount of people are just they're fully off off road racing and um, yeah, rock climbing and doing whatever so it's uh it's cool to see how big the racing is here and i love coming over and seeing everyone uh hook in and go full gas so uh we'll hopefully we'll get to that event eventually one year I always looking forward to uh having toby price on the line and uh uh man just a, a rock solid guy one of those guys you meet in motorsports and you just go you know th- this guy he's, he's not only is he a badass competitor but such a nice guy and uh, you always uh, look forward to uh, hanging out with guys like that. Toby, uh, you know, hopefully everything's good down there in Australia. Uh, you know, I know they've been hit by uh, this pandemic pretty hard. <laughs> Shoot, uh, had fires before that. Crazy times going on in the world. But uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we are going to wrap things up right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I know uh, we've been uh, a little bit different format the past couple of weeks. I know we missed last week, uh, kind of just figuring out uh, the structure of the show. But I can tell you from here on out, the duration, we will have weekly shows whether you're tuning in on uh, Sirius XM, Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio, 10 a.m. Pacific on Sundays, Sports Byline USA, American Forces Network, 
Apple Podcast, Down and Dirty Show dot com, or uh, Podcast One. We got you covered. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks to uh, thanks to Alex Rossi. Uh, big thanks to uh, Toby for Price. Uh, that was kind of a best of Chris Leone. Like I said, uh, iRacing is where it's at. We got some big stuff cranking on our stuff. Uh, you know, on our esports team, we'll still be continuing to podcast. I know uh, Project Action this week. I had Chino Braxton. You got to know this guy. It's going to be part of uh, Charm City Kings' new movie coming out that uh, Will Smith is uh, directing and producing. Um, so it's yeah, guys, amazing wheelies on dirt bikes for days. You want to hit up that interview? Uh, we'll have this thing uncut. Probably uh, this interview with Alex Rossi will be uncut next week in Project Action. Also got an off-road edition from the Mint 400. We got to edit up and get dropped. So lots of content on our front social media channels it's at jim beaver 15 down at dirty show.com we'll get you all the content whether it be written or audio and even a little bit of video content here and there and um i'm gonna try something a little different with the show too uh and start dropping this thing on facebook as a video so uh, we'll see how that works out anyways thank you guys for uh continuing to support us uh big shout out to gentle tire polaris razor vision wheel rigid industries dirt fish optimus and uh, all of uh, all of our amazing partners, Dirtfish, it's at Jim Beaver 15. Actually, it's just Jim Beaver 15. That'll get you a 15% discount at Dirtfish Rally School. Makes sense, right? Jim Beaver 15, boom, 15% off at Dirtfish. I like the sound of that. Anyways, uh, thank you guys. Be safe out there. Seriously, stay home and uh, enjoy your family. Be safe out there because I want you tuning in for many, many years to come right here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. If you got guest suggestions or anything you want me to talk about, though, definitely, definitely hit me up at at Jim Beaver 15. I am active on social media right now, just like everybody else is, and I would love to hear from you guys. All right, for real, signing off this time. Be safe, and we'll see you next week right here on the show.